Hey, what's up and welcome back to CCLP4. We are on level 132, Mono Rail. And yeah, let's get going here. Looks like we can see a bunch of bugs going on this track. I guess that's the monorail. And we got some block pushing to do. Alright. So yeah, I guess we just use all the blocks right here. So let's, why don't we just go and do this one, because that'll make things a little faster. I can see a ball up there. Maybe we'll be dealing with that here pretty soon. Yep, with that uh, red key, that should be happening. So, I've got a, a confession to make. I feel like I, I say that a lot lately. But my little hesitation that I, I've been showing there when I, it comes to crossing those bugs at a certain point, I've got that problem in real life when it comes to escalators. Like, you guys ever have problems with escalators, like, getting on them? Like, when I was little, I was scared of escalators uh, as far as getting on them. I was like Buddy the Elf, you know, when it came to getting on an escalator and trying to hang on to my current position and all that. I don't know. For some reason, that was a big fear for me. Even today, like, I don't have the fear part of it, but, uh, oh, I need fire boots if I'm going to go in there. I'm... Let's go this way. I see fire boots right there, so that seems like a pretty safe bet. There we go. But yeah, I I still hesitate when I got I get into escalators, and I just realized this last week because I went to Las Vegas, and if you haven't been to Las Vegas, there's like a kajillion escalators in that town. Like, because on the Strip, you cannot walk across streets. Like, they don't let you do that. You have to take these bridges and ride up and down escalators, and like it's a mess. All right, so I think I'm going to have to go this route. Like this. Oh, wait. I should have gone there. How was I supposed to see that there was a blue key there? Is that even possible? Alright, we're going to we're gonna have to start over. But yeah, I, I totally forgot that that was the order in which you had to do that. But yeah, uh, they, they have all these bridges and stuff that... Uh, go over the, the roads, and then escalators on each side of the bridges to make sure you can get down to the street level once you're actually on the other side of the road. So it's this very convoluted process to get from place to place. And to put it in perspective, I was staying at Treasure Island, and the hotel that uh, at which we had our conference was like right across the street. And I had to cross, let me see, I'm not, I'm not even counting the escalators in the hotel itself. I'm counting the ones outdoors. I think at least three escalators. Like, I had to go down, and then I had to go up again to get to the road crossing, and then I had to go down again. Like, the the whole thing... Because the exit to the hotel is, like, on the second level, which... I, don't, I never understood that, but I guess it makes sense, since you're having to cross one road that's not the strip uh, road, but, like... Wait a minute, did I forget something? Oh, no, I can't get to that. Uh, it's not the strip road, the road that's like Las Vegas Boulevard or whatever it's called. It's like a side road. Uh, but you um, you still have to go over it using that little bridge. So it's, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a big fan of Vegas. I know some people really love it there. but I And I love visiting it, I'll, I'll be honest. But I could not ever really live there or go to the strip regularly if I did, at the very least. I, I, I just can't imagine doing it. I mean, I guess you, you could figure out that this way doesn't penalize you and do this first. I mean, I guess there's that. So that, that part makes sense. I, I should have thought of that. All right, so now we'll do this. There we go. And then we got to switch the blocks back again to get to that door area there. And get ourselves another key. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, oh, this just takes us back here. Oh, wait. We have to... Pff, duh. <laughs> we have to push the blocks into the bombs. It's been a long time since I played this one. 
right. Uh, well, we got a couple of choices here, so I guess let's go. They look like they're connected, so let's just go to this one. I don't think it matters which order you do this in. Alright, so now we've got this ball. I guess we have to push that all the way down to make it through that. And we got a teleport. Okay, that looks cool, but it, it seems like I would have to get all the chips if I'm going to make it back. And we know that at least three of the remaining ones are here. And, oh, the both of them are over there, okay. Alright, so, you may be tempted um, to push one down to the right side immediately, but you actually don't want to do that, because you'll notice here that you can put a block here and then turn it around. And actually, you want to do that if you want to get a block across here. You have to partial post it using the other block. So this is something that w was a little tricky um, to some people, but it's actually not that hard. You just have to do that. And then we just push this one all the way back here, like such. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Didn't want to try to make that uh, timing there while I was sneezing. Okay. So now we can go out here. And we can get some more keys, which are good, because we need those to get to the exit. Yeah, this is a Tyler Sontag level, and I want to say this is the last level he designed for CC1, if I'm remembering correctly. I know it's the last level of his latest set. Which was not the standard 40 levels, interestingly enough. He usually makes level sets that are 40 levels long. But this one only got up to 22, I think. There's that key we were looking at earlier. You want to be really careful when doing this area in MS, because you could boost into a bug if you're not uh, cautious. But we made it, and we can move on to Monochrome now. Each time you leave, choose a color. Only press buttons next to doors of that color until you return. Alright, uh, let's do this one first. This is designed by Andrew Menzies, and it was in the other 100 tiles, so we've played this one before. Actually, wait a minute, let me start that over. I'm going to pick... Was it green I did first? I'm trying to remember the... There's an order that you can do that allows you to go through each area only one time. I'm trying to remember what it is. Um, I don't want to get that yet. Okay, I, I'm going to have to go out that way. Okay, we can't go through either of those uh, chips there, or buttons there. But I can do that. Okay, so now we're back here. Let's go this way. And we cannot get through that, so maybe we did have to do blue first. I was thinking about blue being first. Yeah, you know what, let's just cut our losses and do blue. Thankfully there's a nice long slide here that you can put blocks, push blocks onto. Which is cool. And we can push this block up here. Fancy schmancy. Okay, we cannot go through there. That's all, that's all we can see here. Oh, wait a minute. There's a teleport, isn't it? No, wait. We can't get over there. Oh, wait. There's the ice slide. My bad. Where does this go? Here we are. Now we're talking. Okay, so we need to get over there with yellow. Okay. Go up this way. There's the teleport over there. And we can continue going that way, but I'm going to go up here first. I think this goes back. Yep, it goes back there. All right, so I think we're doing okay so far. Oh, and hey, with the blue... 
uh, door chosen, we can now go to the tank button. I guess that's appropriate for the blue, the blue lock. I, I always call those blue doors instead of blue locks. I think it's because in the MS uh, CC, like the one in the Best of Windows Entertainment Pack, uh, the help file for that, they call them doors. But locks makes more sense because doors could refer to, like, toggle doors, you know. All right, let's go to green next. I think it was blue, green, yellow, red was the the color order I, I did for the bold route. I could be wrong, but I want to say that's what it was. Okay, that goes, just goes there. So all the teleports lead to that area. Whatever the order is, I do remember that I only used each uh, door once in the... or each color once in the whole route, so... It's not exactly a really hard route to piece together. But it's a really satisfying one because for a while I didn't think 634 was possible. So when I finally found it, I was like, yes! Finally! Alright, was it... Maybe it's red-yellow. Yeah, let's just do yellow-red. I, I forgot the last two. Okay, I'm not going to risk that with that that close. Okay. Now I just forgot the or <laughs> I forgot the color. Yellow, okay. I didn't want to guess. I, I mean, I wanted to play it safe, of course. So. Alright, so we need to go this way. Yellow. So we got a couple of things to investigate here. One of them is uh, this whole deal with the Paramecia area. I know one of these leads to yellow. Oh, it's the top, the right one. I guess that's how we would get to the upper area with this route. Yeah. Because now we can go over here and do all this. Okay, so we cannot go through any of that. So why don't we go over here, grab that ship. So it's mainly red that we've got left to look at. And there's plenty to do with red. First of all, there's this whole thing here. We haven't even gotten those chips yet. Three to go. One of them's over here. I remember that pretty clearly. It's kind of a clever way to set that up. Let's see, so this leads to the red door. Is there a reason we should go here? Because in case you went here early. Oh, here we go. You can do that. That's clever. So now we go this way. Now there's more of a reason to do this. And now we can get this chip. Alright, so we got all the chips and we should be golden as far as getting to the exit. So that's good news. Made it past the maze. I like this this level. It's a really cool idea for a maze. I, I like mazes in general, but this is a really creative concept for one. And uh, we are going to move on to Pushover, a level by Archie Pusaka. This level almost didn't make it into the set, but uh, Jeffrey and I lobbied for it pretty hard. It's a level that involves a couple of red herrings when it comes to these chips. Because you'll notice that there's actually more chips in the level than what are required. We can't see all of them yet, but the ones at the top and the bottom over here are extras. Despite the blocks being near them, you actually shouldn't be going for those because you want to open up paths throughout the rest of the level that enable the pushing of other blocks. And that's ultimately what you want to do. So right here you'll notice there's two more right there. So that's an example of one of them. And uh, I'm trying to remember how to solve this. It's been a little while. Um, I think the first thing you have to do is you have to push that down. First of all, I'm going to get this out of the way here. I'll leave that there for the time being. 
and you have to push this over up there. All right, so now what we need to do, and I think I may have just messed this up. I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to blow up the bomb there. Uh, that was silly of me. Can I not do it with the... Oh, if I had not pushed that to the right, I think I might have been able to pull this off. Because I have to blow up the bomb to the left of me right now. Man. Me and my impulsive maneuvers. Okay, well, we'll start over. This level is pretty easy to, to execute. But yeah, um, originally there was another level that we were talking about, a level called Shuffling, that Zane Quex Geeks, I forget the pronunciation, uh, made. I I liked the ideas in the level, personally, but I wasn't really a big fan of just how compressed it was for the amount of hidden information it had in it. There's a lot of things like recessed walls under blocks, and they were very sporadically applied throughout the, the course of the level. And normally... I, I I'll, I'll be honest, like, I like compressed block puzzles. Like, I'm not, like, against them or anything. But the level just had a few too many gotchas. Whereas this level is definitely a gotcha, but it feels less mean. It, like, it feels like you need to actually use logic to solve it. And I, I like that a little bit more, to be honest. Okay, so we're, we're going to need to ultimately get over there. So, let's work that out. Um, one of these is going to have to hold that down. So why don't I go ahead and just put this right there. And then we can use a nail to uh, cross over here. I mean, I guess we can cross over right now, but we're going to need to set up a nail to use those blocks if we're going to blow up the bombs over there. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right. In Lynx, this is a little tougher. In MS, you can just backwards boost this. And I'm trying to remember how you do it in Lynx, actually. Uh, the room's symmetrical, so... I think you have to push this down, maybe? Yeah, I think you have to push this down. Do something like this, where you leave it there. And then... You go out like this. Push it there push that down, and then go around. Which, I, I love the way that comes together. It's really neat. Alright. One block for one chip. That's not bad in a level like this. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to have to come around if I'm going to extract all these blocks out of their hiding place so we can get to the final two chips over there. So what I really like about this level is that it's one of those ones that really challenges you to think about what you're doing simultaneously as you're setting up other things. Because normally in these kinds of block pushing levels, it's easy to kind of get caught up in the immediate goal. Whereas this level really forces you to think, okay, yes, I'm getting to this chip, but at the same time, I'm also, you know, reaching this other, uh, I'm opening up like a path that I can use for another block. And I really, really love that. Like, I don't see a lot of levels do that sort of block puzzle well, and this is one of the few that does. So I'm I'm real, I'm over the moon for this level. I, th I think it's a great level. All right, propaganda level one thirty five. Another Tyler Sontag level. This one was from TS Zero. Some people call it TSO, like Trans Siberian Orchestra, uh, but TS Zero is actually what it's called. So, all right, so we're gonna need to get this block out. Um, What's going on here? We got this P. We actually use that for the CCLP4 logo. I remember we were talking about what levels should make up the logo because we wanted to use different levels. And hey, we got a key up here. That should help us out with this block, right? So let's uh, let's see what we can do with that. All right, so now we can use this uh, to push the block in, and maybe we can disrupt that bug. I'm seeing there's a bomb uh, sitting over here, and the bug can certainly take care of that for us certainly would work a little better than a block. Okay, so I do not want to follow the block all the way over. So, can I get to it? How would I reach it? I can, oh, that's what the recessed wall is for. Okay. 
That's how you do that. Okay, think think we got the picture now. So I push it over. We go over here, loop around, and now we can simply put it there. And if we can get that blue door to open, maybe uh, the block can still be useful to us. All right, so presumably this controls that trap. I'm seeing a bunch of buttons and stuff here. The above button connects to the trap on the right. So I guess this one right here, and the button under the tank connects to the tra one on the left. So I guess this connects here, this connects there. That makes sense. Left to left, right to right. All right, so I can go through right now into this empty room. And I guess I can get to the exit, but there would have to be a tank cloned to make that work. Interesting. I'd also need to get, apparently, to the right to get a green key, so... Figuring out a way to switch this is going to be an interesting challenge. Alright, so I need some keys if I'm ever going to use that, but I do have the blue one, and that's what we need if we're going to put a block in here, so let's work on that. I guess I could have just taken the slide, but oh well. Yep, that does lead to the green key. All right, first of all, we do have one uh, blue button over there, which is good. Question is, how do we get over there? What exactly does this accomplish? This allows us to go down there. So that's good. We can go down there and get that. Unless, wait a minute. How do we solve this? There's a recessed wall here, and we don't really know what it does, do we? Hmm. So, I can see a problem here. We can put the tank down here, but if we press that button, the uh, tank is just going to go back up and not hold anything down for us. But I see a way around that, potentially. So, if I go down here with the uh, the block and if I can leave the block there actually not go down there with the block, just put the block right here and if I can find a way back then maybe when I reverse the tank it will come up here hit the block go back down and then hit the button again. The question is, how do I position the block with the tank still in that spot? That also enables me to go down there, because right now I'm trapped, like there's no way back. And I don't have any keys that would really help in that regard. Unless I just missed one, let me just make sure I got everything. There's nothing there in the... Uh, bottom right. Um, forgot to mention, this level was actually originally titled Neon, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be anything to do. So, I guess let's just try pushing the button? Oh! The button was here! Okay, that makes way more sense then. Alright, um... Uh, I guess I should have left the, the block there so that it switched. Okay, I didn't realize that it was the, the button under the tank below us. I thought it was the button un, under the tank above us. Okay, that actually makes a little more sense from a solvability standpoint because we were wondering earlier how that would work. Okay, let's uh, restart this again. Another level I kind of forgot about. Which is a shame because this is a great level. And I do like the title better than the old one. Just we're trying to remember how to get back, which is this way. Okay. And we got it just in time. Okay. 
Now that we know sort of what we're doing, I think I know what our course of action here is going to be. We're going to put the block here first, down below. Then we'll do the green key after that. Okay. Slide on over. All right, so if I do this then this should work. I should be able to get this button pressed and then the tank will just come back. Yep, there we go. Now, we get the green key. And this is great news because now I can actually get the block back over here. And now the way such that the tank can now go down. There's also another button over there past that green door at the top, which is good because we really need that. We do not yet have a yellow key though, so I don't want to use the other set of buttons there at this point. But for now, I am going to go ahead and position that there. Go around this way, do this. I can only press it once. Now I'm at the mercy of the tank, come okay. back. Yes, got it, all right. So now I'm seeing that there is a situation here in which the tank will need to come back and hold the button down. But we're going to need to make sure that that happens in such a way that um, it will not change course. Because we're going to hit the button twice. And what you'll need to figure out here is that you'll need to hit the buttons, or the second button I should say, while the tank is sliding on the ice. And I totally forgot to blow up the bomb. Oh, why did I do that? That was so dumb. Oh. All right, you know what? You guys are going to get a free bold route demonstration today. Watch this. This is the bold route for this level. Uh, just so I don't have to play this again. I love this level. Don't get me wrong. This is not a slight against the level. This is a slight against JB for being an idiot. And, uh... I kind of want to give my fingers a rest right now, so I'm being lazy tonight. It's been a really stressful last couple of days, I'm not going to lie. It, it's There's been a lot going on that I don't really want to talk about here in uh, a public YouTube video, but uh, I mean, it, it, it's okay. I mean, there, it's not like, you know, something horrible is happening. It's just a lot busy busyness going on. Um, so let's see. Let's go and open the blue door. I'm trying to narrate this even though I'm not actually playing it, which is weird. We go down the slide. I guess I hit the thing there for some reason. The wall on the fourth slide. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Man, I need to make like some sort of remix, a musical thing with uh, the Chips Challenge sounds. Oh, I guess it's faster to do it this way. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, well, no, this is the only way you can do it. Never mind. All right, there goes the tank. This is a pretty straightforward route, to be honest, so it's not that hard to figure out anyway. <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. That's what we missed last time. So now we'll just go do this. Wait four moves. And then we'll go there. And now it connects it. Fun times. All right, moving on to a route that I'm not going to show. Seeing red. So this is a level with uh, teeth. And collecting lots of chips and not dying like I just did right there. Don't do not do that at home, kids. That's not a good thing. So you want to evade all the teeth. And uh, I got to say, this level took a little while to grow me because at first I was like, they're kind of hard to notice, especially in MS, uh, because the teeth are reddish and these are doors are red and the keys are red. And it's like... I. I I wasn't a big fan at first of the level, but the more I played it, the more I loved it. Because I love 
I, I talked about this when I played the maze that turned on and off during the other 100 tiles let's play. But one of the things I love about this kind of level is that it really forces you into this uh, method of thinking where you're like, okay, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it. And then you're like, whoa, an escape escape route, and woo, you're going through dodging teeth and things and stuff. And yeah, you know, you feel so cool doing it too. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of a fun level is that you feel good playing it. Like you, you really feel accomplished playing a level that involves this kind of dodging that the level gives you all these these ways out. Like I, I like that. It's it's a really neat. Uh, I wouldn't say twist per se, but it's a neat take on the genre of dodging and mazes and collection. Like it blends them in a way that's just so perfect, and I, I love it. All right, so we got a whole horde of teeth coming for us here. So let's get out, 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 out. There's also a few bombs around the level, you may have noticed, but uh, I'm not going to just spend keys just to use the bombs so that we can get rid of teeth, because you can get the teeth into some pretty uh, stuck positions, which is nice. You're not really required to use bombs, which is good. Oh, really? You're still there? What's it going to take to get you out of there? There we go. Gotcha. Okay, one ship left. Where are you? Right there. Okay, that's not bad, because the exit's near, pretty much nearby. How many did we have left? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We had 14 keys left? Good night. All right. That was fun. All right, everybody. Next time, we're going to be taking on the longest track, but we're going to be doing that in the next video. So until then... Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves today. If you did, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell to get notified of the next episode. But until then, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the flip side.